Hey guys, so I just wanted to film this vlog before I go to bed, of course, it will not be uploaded until tomorrow, which, so that means that I'm filming in your yesterday, but I wanted to film this before I went to bed, I just got home from the movies, my brother and I just saw Annie, and it was really, really cute, it was super cute. If you're looking for, like, an urban carbon copy, that's not what this is. They've definitely updated it. I mean, the storyline is essentially the same. Some of the songs, like, from the original, they keep. And so it's not like, so they definitely incorporate songs from the original. Other songs from the original are altered and, again, updated. And they added a few new songs, so there, at least from what I remember, there are more songs in this one than there are in the original. But I still really, really liked it. Cameron Diaz did a good job, and I love that she didn't try to copy Carol Burnett. I like how she made Miss Hannigan her own, and just, I don't know. It was really good, though. It was really good. I feel like there's a lot of mixed reviews online about it, like, especially when I look at ratings on, like, Rotten Tomato and stuff like that. But if you're looking for just, like, a cute sort of heartwarming type of movie with some songs to sort of make it fun, then this is probably a good movie for you to see. I have a very broad taste in movies, and that includes movies like this. And it was really, really cute, and I liked it. But again, if you're looking for an urban carbon copy, of the original. This is not it. It does not follow the original exactly. Obviously there's a change where it's in the city, which I'm sure you could always already tell by the trailers, so I'm sure that would be no surprise to you. It still follows the storyline. It is still Annie. It is still, it's still the musical, but they have updated it and they, they have brought it to our current 21st century culture. And I didn't mind it and I think they were, I think it worked. I think it worked. And I have to say, it, I forget sometimes just how good of a voice Jamie Foxx has. He has this one song that he's sleeping. I'm too tired. But he has this one song that he sings on his helicopter. And I don't know, I feel like it's just so appropriate for his voice somehow. And it just kind of reminded me just how good his voice is is. I don't know, it was a good movie, guys. You should go see it. I feel like I have a bump on my head. Do I have a bump on my head? No. I don't know. I'm tired. But I do have work in the morning, but I'm getting to bed early, so maybe I will actually get, like, somewhat legitimate sleep. I'm really exhausted. I, oh, not that you care about this, but when I was filming outside earlier for one of the challenges, like I mentioned in my last vlog that I was doing today, um... While I was walking, obviously none of my trees have leaves on them right now because it is December. But I have this big crepe myrtle in my backyard and I was like walking kind of under it because the branches come down pretty low. I was looking for a stick so I was trying to look on the ground under the tree for a stick. And as I was coming out of the tree I thought that I, I thought that I walked out far enough. And as I was walking, all of a sudden this big branch came and, like, hit me in the eye and, like, scratched my eyelid. And it was just not a smart moment for me. It really wasn't. I've been so tired the last couple of days. I feel like I just keep having these moments where my, I just... Oh, I feel like you would never know that I get straight A's in school because it's just some of this... Oh, too tired, too tired. I haven't even read very much, which is really sad because, like, I keep thinking about reading. I finished Love Letters to the Dead, by the way, like, a few days ago, and that was really good. I expected more emotion from it, honestly. Everybody kept talking about how it made them cry or how it's a lot like Perks of Being a Wallflower, which, if you like Perks, you'll like this book. They're very similar, but I don't know. As much as I enjoyed this book... I definitely enjoyed reading it. It did not make me emotional. It didn't even make me close to crying. I just did not have that punched in the heart connection with it. But a lot of people did, so you know, you might. I just didn't. It just didn't really get, affect me in that way, but I still found it enjoyable. I love what the author did with it. I, her name is just evading me right now. And it was just... I don't know, I really liked it, and especially because a lot of the letters 
the celebrities that she was writing to. I'm very familiar with, I think everybody's very familiar with their celebrities, but you know, some of the stuff I was surprised how much I already knew about these people and some of it I got to learn new things. But I think the one that made me the happiest that was in there was Judy Garland because there's this one letter in the beginning where she's talking about how she used to watch Judy Garland movies with her mom and how she grew up watching a bunch of Judy Garland movies and that's me. Like I grew up watching Judy Garland movies, my mom and my grandma, and I love her. I love her, and I've seen every one of the movies that she listed in the book, and it just, I feel like little things like that help me to connect to the book in a different way, even if it didn't make me cry. I do feel like there's a connection to the book in a different way. I feel like there's something else I was going to say about the book. What was it? Oh yeah, this book, seriously, I, during... <laughs> For the duration it took me to read this book, and maybe for a day or two after, I listened to so much Amy Winehouse. Now, she writes to Amy Winehouse as one of the celebrity in her love letters to the dead. So that right there kind of inspires you to kind of listen to the people that she's writing to if you are if you haven't listened to them a lot before. Obviously, I know who Amy Winehouse is. I've heard a few of her songs, but reading this book, I think, inspired me to listen to more of her songs, and because her songs kind of fit my mood while reading this book. I listened to her so much. I'm only just now finally kind of cut down on that and really cut not listen to her as much, but it lasted for a few days after I finished the book too. It just, it suits. Except I still don't like Rehab. That is just, I just don't like that song. I've never liked that song and I feel like it, if that's the only song that you've heard because that's the one you hear the most, that or Valerie, but Valerie's actually a good song. I just feel like Rehab is not a very accurate representation of her music. Anyway, I'm probably just droning on, droning, droning, droning. I should probably go to sleep because I do have work in the morning and even though I'm going to bed early, I need every last one of those hours of sleep because I just... I'm tired of being tired and I don't want to be a zombie all through tomorrow like I have been the last couple of days because I've been so tired. Alright, so I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Night.